So now you have your home lab set up and it's time to get some SSL certificates to it and enable it remote access. And this one, I'm gonna show you just how you do that. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Ryan, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are gonna take a look at Nginx proxy. This is a reverse proxy. And basically what this does is when an outside source tries to access your website or a service, it is the in-between from the public to your internal server. And when they try to ping or access stuff, it's gonna go through Cloudflare and then Cloudflare will send that access so the end user never sees any of your internal stuff so we're going to get that set up we're going to install on docker and then we're going to set up certificates um, with less encrypt and um, all of this is going to be through cloudflare so without further ado let's go ahead and get into the first step which is installing nginx proxy on docker the first thing we need to do is make our Docker Compose file. And this is the example I'm gonna use. I pull it directly from the Nginx Proxy Manager site. This is how they suggest you do it. We're not gonna monkey with anything. Um, I'll put a link in the description of where you can go look at that. And I can also put this you know, script in the description below. You don't have to like copy off the screen or anything. So let's look through it real quick. What we're gonna do here is we have you know services, the app, the image. So this is gonna pull the latest version of this installation. We'll do container name. I'm calling on the Nginx proxy manager. This is just how the Docker container, you know, the name it shows up with. Uh, if you're using Portainer, that's what the name's gonna be. And then we'll do restart. We want it to restart always unless we specifically stop it. We're mapping the ports, so 80 to 80, 81 to 81, 443 to 443, and then our volumes. So we have, you know, by default, it's gonna go data, map to data, and then let's encrypt goes to Etsy, let's encrypt. The thing here is we are gonna use let's encrypt for our SSL certificates. And what this is gonna end up doing Doing is allow us to do actual domain names for our home lab. So we don't have to remember IP addresses anymore. We can start doing domain names. You know, for example, let's say if we're running um, Pihole, we can do pihole.techforgood.com, let's say, and that could go to our Pihole instance. So this is gonna be a great opportunity for you to use a domain name for this. If you need a domain name, I'll put a link in the description below of where you can get a domain name. I use Namecheap, they've been great. I've used them for for many years. So what we'll do here is if you want to change any of this, go ahead. If not, we're just going to copy and reuse it. So the next step, since we're using a Docker compose file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this via the command line. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and SSH into your you know, server that has Docker on it, and then we'll get our Docker compose file all set up. Here we are SSH into our server and I have a folder called Docker that I like to keep all of my stuff in. You can do whatever you want, keep everything default. The first thing we need to do is make our directories. And so if we go back and we look at this Docker compose, we see we need to have a let's encrypt and a data. So what I'm gonna do is create those, but I wanna put it in its own directory. So let me see what I have here. I already created the Nginx proxy manager directory. You can create whatever you want if you wish to do it this way. So I'm gonna go see get in there and then what we need to do for my example is I'm going to create a data and then I'll let's encrypt so I'll go make dir data I make dir let's so now I have those two folders in there and the next part we need to do is make our actual docker compose so we want to go um, nano docker compose dot YAML. And this is making basically a text file, if you will, in Linux. And what we need to do is we need to take all of this stuff that we have here. We're going to go ahead and copy it. And then we'll go ahead and paste it in here. And again, if there's anything you're going to change, do that now. Most likely you might want to change the container name if you don't want to call it that. Or, you know, if you have specific places you want to put the volumes, you can go ahead and do that. So now we go ahead and exit out of this. And then we see there's our Docker Compose. So go ahead and clear out. Just get a little better screen going here. And the next thing we want to do is run our Docker Compose file. So we'll go Docker Compose up and then dash D. I'm doing the dash D because I don't want to have, you know, hit enter anything when it's going through the install. So we'll run that. It's going to go ahead and start pulling the application or the image. You can see there's 36 things it's going to do. And while this is doing that, we'll recap real quick what we're doing. Right now we are, we created our folders. We created our Docker Compose file. We've run it and now it's pulling the information or pulling the image down, adding it to Docker and it's going to go ahead and install it. Once this gets installed, what we'll do is we'll take a look and make sure it put everything in the correct directories, you know, cause I did, you know, my own data folder and I did my own let's encrypt folder. And then we can take a look over at our portainer setup and make sure that it added there. So you can see here, our network was created. So, and then our container itself was created. So it should be up and running now. We'll head over to portainer and let's see and make sure. 
So right here, you can see our, you know, portainer and we have the Nginx proxy manager right here. If we look back at our Docker compose file, I'm gonna bring this back over here for you to see, you can see we called it Nginx proxy manager. And then that's right here, what it called it in portainer or in Docker, but we're looking at portainer. So that's great news. You could see our ports 443, 80 and 81. That's what we did here. And then if we go into the container itself, you can see what we set up here for the volumes is all right there. So we are we are ready to go. Let's go ahead and get into Nginx Proxy Manager and set up our first set up our credentials. And then we will go ahead and set up our first SSL certificate and everything. We'll get that configured and going. To access your Nginx Proxy Manager login screen, you need to go to the IP address of this server that you have this installed on and then colon 81. So if it comes up with an error about it being not secure, you need to go HTTP and not HTTPS. To log into Nginx Proxy Manager, the first thing you have to do is the email address and the password. The email address, it's all default with this. So it's going to be admin at example dot com and then the password is change me i'll put this in the description below you'll go ahead and click sign in and it's going to ask you fill out your new administrator stuff admin your name your nickname or your login name etc and your email address so go ahead and fill this out with whatever you want to call it and go ahead and click save after you click save it's going to come up with the change your password go ahead and type in change me for your password here because that's the current password and then you'll type in your new password twice in there and click save. After you get logged in here, this is the main screen. Before we get into the setup here, what we have to do is we have to make sure we have a domain name and that domain name is pointed to the correct location. So you can use a provider like DuckDNS if you don't have your own domain name. But this video, I'm gonna go over a customized vanity URL. Again, if you need one, I'll put a link in the description below to Namecheap where you can pick one up. I use them, there's always coupons, it's a great price. So we're gonna go over to our friends over at Cloudflare. You need to have an account created already and have your domain name all set up. I can do a video on that if you need to figure that out. But for this video, we're gonna assume you already have this set up at Cloudflare. And what we need to do is set up two different DNS entries. And what that's gonna do is gonna take our domain name and it's gonna point it to the IP address of where this needs to go. So what we need to do is over here on the left side under your domain name, we'll click DNS. And then you're gonna click add record. The two records we need to add are going to be a C name and then kind of just a catch all. So what you need to do here is make sure it's an A record. The next portion here, you need to type in the domain name and then the IP address here. And the IP address is going to be the IP to the server itself. So for example, if you have an internal server that let's say it's the IP address to your Nginx proxy manager is 192.168.1.100. You'll type that in right here. You're not going to type in the external IP address to your router or anything. The reason is is we're going to set something up later with an API key that Cloudflare is going to know exactly what to do. Go ahead and enter your IP address information right here and then we do not want it to be proxied so we will uncheck that. We want DNS only and we'll click save. And then the next one we need to do is a CNAME record. So we'll click CNAME and then here we're just going to do a star because we just want a wild card for anything and then it's going to go to that domain name that we did earlier and then we don't want this proxied either. So we'll uncheck the proxy and we'll click save. Now we should be able to access our, you know, our website, etc., via that stuff. So if we go back over here to our Nginx proxy manager, what we need to do is click on SSL certificates up top. We'll do new and our domains, we're going to do whatever your domain is. So it's going to be your domain, you know, .com or whatever. And then we're going to do star dot your domain dot whatever. Make sure you click add and then we'll do star. So this should be kind of a catch all for everything there. Then what you're going to do here is go ahead and click test server you know reachability and for me it's found it's good to go it should be possible it's just taking a while for it to catch up because we just did the naming so you can try all that stuff later whatever you know whatever you want there for your email address type in whatever email address you want let's encrypt to use we're going to go ahead and use dns challenge we're going to choose our provider so for this one we're doing cloudflare you could do stuff like you know duck dns there's you know do they have namecheap in here i'm assuming they probably do there's namecheap so whoever you're DNS provider is, you know, for this, you'll choose that there. For me, it's going to be Cloudflare. And then here you can see it wants a Cloudflare API key. We need to go set that up. So before we click save, let's head back over to Cloudflare and we'll get our API key set up. 
back here on Cloudflare, we're gonna go ahead and create our API key. And once again, this is all completely free. Just make sure when you added your domain name, you chose the free plan, this will work perfect. So you wanna go into your account profile. On the left side, you have API tokens and we're gonna create a token. So we'll click create token. And what we need to do here, we wanna do an edit zone DNS. So we'll click use template. This first part, we wanna keep it zone DNS edit. It's no problem here. For the second part, we're gonna do include specific zone. And then here on the right box, we're gonna assign this to the domain name we want this you know API key to be used for. So whatever we set up back in Nginx Proxy Manager and the DNS section here on Cloudflare, choose that domain from the dropdown. And the rest we can leave default. So we'll continue to summary, and then we'll go ahead and create token. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna copy this token here. It's in this box. Don't worry, by the time this video comes out, this token is deleted. So we'll copy that token. We'll go back over to Nginx Proxy Manager right here where it says DNS Cloudflare API token. So where that zero starts, we're gonna go ahead and delete all of that and paste our API token in right there. We can do, I agree to let's encrypt terms of service and then we'll click save. And if everything works, we should get a, a nice little thumbs up. You're good to go. It might take a minute. Also remember DNS stuff does take a while to make those changes. If for some reason this errors out, you can go back like an hour later and try it again. So, and then there we go. We have our first SSL Let's Encrypt stuff set up. You can see here under name, we have our domain names, our certificate providers, Let's Encrypt, and then when our SSL expires. It says inactive because we're not using it yet. What we need to do now is go over and let's create an actual server or you know a redirect and let's get this all ingrained. So we can go back to home if you want and do proxy hosts. And here we're going to do add proxy host. This is going to be the name of what we wanna do here. So for this example, let's just go nginx.vistalab.com. This is my fake little company here. And then is it gonna be HTTP or HTTPS? And then the IP address, not the whole like, you know, HTTP, all that stuff, and not the colon and port, just the IP address. So this one, you know, go ahead and type in whatever your IP address is there. So for Nginx Proxy Manager, it's gonna be 81, whatever your port is gonna be. So we'll do 81. And then we can go ahead and, you know, if you need to do WebSocket support, you know, block exploits, et cetera. If you want it to be publicly accessible, you know, it's up to you. You can create an access list. We're gonna go over here to SSL and then we want to use, you know, the drop down here, this bottom one or whatever you just created with your Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. So I'll choose that. I wanna force SSL and then I'm gonna go HTTP uh, support. And then there's other stuff here. If you want to do that, I'm not gonna do that if there's custom locations, um, but we're just gonna click save and then look that we now have nginx.avistalab.com it points to whatever this destination is it's using a let's encrypt ssl it's public and it's online if we go to our ssl certificates you can now see the status is in use so really cool if we go you know, refresh this and now you can see this is all set up so under our proxy host we have nginx.avistalab.com or yours is going to be whatever your domain name is right points to the ip address again this is the ip address to that docker server you know, that you have running and then whatever port. So port 81 for an Nginx proxy manager, SSL is going, it's public, it's online. Now, if we go over to our SSL certificates, you can see before it said inactive, now it's in use. So what we can do now is because we have this all set up via this domain name, we can actually go to this and it should work. You don't have to remember the IP address or the port. So let me go ahead and click on it. And there you go. Look at it just automatically opened up. We are good to go. It's protected. So if we go to connection is secure we can see certificate is valid and it's let's encrypt tells us when it was you know issued on when it expires you're good to go like this is a free ssl for your internal hosting stuff like that really cool setup and there you have it. That is how you set up Nginx Proxy Manager on Docker and also set up your own SSL certificates for your internal servers. Now, a real quick caveat here, you need to have something that is going to be able to do your DNS stuff internally. So if you have you know something running like this server, like I said earlier, if it's 192.168.1.100 and you type, you know, and you sign it nginx.whatever.com, you have to have something internally that knows how to kind of, you know, set that up and do DNS. So whether that's your router or you do Pi-hole, like for example, I'm gonna do Pi-hole in the future and I'm gonna set it up so it does all my DNS and knows where to send all the, you know, the server requests, etc. For the example here, because I'm doing it on my VPS through um, Velox Media, I don't have to have that 
you know, all set up that DNS um, because it's an external site. So internally, you're going to need something that knows how to translate your server name to the IP address. Again, that's how you do it. I hope you enjoyed that video. I'm going to put in the description below the commands we use for the Docker Compose. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to try to help you out. A future video, I'll probably do something on how to password protect your, you know, your site through Cloudflare because that's going to be pretty important. And I really appreciate it if you follow the channel. We're still getting this channel tech for good built up appreciate all the support like the video give it a thumbs up share you know all that stuff so until next time stay safe have fun and keep doing good <laughs>